Okay, so I'm going to keep the camera down. There was one group that did not have the opportunity to do the lesson. And so you're going to get an opportunity to hear and listen in on their conversation as they investigate. So what I would like for you to do is I would like for you to pull out your metacognition sheet so that when you're having your conversation about your inference, you make sure that you're using, so they're just, so I, I gave them the option. Um, if they want to use the glove, they can use the glove. I cleaned them really well. Um, they can they can pass if they don't want to. And so the students are just investigating. And so I'm not going to get anyone's face. Thirty seconds. And so this side of students, they've already looked at the material that came from my neighbor's trash. And they have out their metacognition sheet. So they're going to flip it over and they're going to make sure that as they're having a conversation, they're going to make sure they look at the inferring. And they're gonna choose one of those bullets to start to okay. So this side, you guys go ahead and start talking. They they used it or they tested it out. Okay, I'm saying that they predict painting a room because they have paint. I predict that they love going outside to like tea and they just want to see I think that they would do they, the they like paint because they have a bunch the, of paint and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, they have they're trying to do the fire because it has I just think they like tea or something. Yeah. They had a lot of tea. Um, that, um, they oh, like, uh, the yeah, teacher probably made like tea. the paint they, I think, uh, um, yeah, yeah, they probably, they probably did tea I heard they, they, um, they, um, they um, do things that they didn't need, but except, um, except the paint, they would need the paint. Tell me a little bit about the neighbor based on what you saw. What? I think that they golf. Okay. They golf or they used to? What gave you that idea that they golf? The stitch. Can you show me what you're talking about? Oh, okay. Put it on the desk, let me. Okay, so that clue. Anybody else? I think they. I think they wasted a lot of paint because. When I shook it, it was still paint in there. Okay, so they might be wasteful neighbors. Okay. All right. Anybody down here want to share? Mm -hmm. They might like this one. Okay. It's plastic roof. I think it's called. And see. Coffee. 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 It is coffee. I think this fiber drink is for. So you could drink healthier. So you think my neighbors are healthy? All right, hands on head, shoulders, clap. Head, shoulders, clap. Head, shoulders, clap. Okay, thank you. As I walked around and I listened in on your conversation, 
I heard really, really, really good inferencing. I really like the way that you were not just using I infer. Some of you decided to use different bullets. What I want to encourage you to do is, even when you make your inference, you need to support it by the clue. So I like the way that this young lady, um, she said, I infer that they were golfers. And then I asked her why, and then she was able to go back to her clue and support her answer. And she picked up the golf tee that you stick in the ground. So make sure not only are you just saying, I infer they are painting, or one young lady said, I infer that they are artists. Also, give me the reason why or how you came up with that inference. I believe or I infer or my guess is they are artists because they have several small um, samples of paint. So don't just stop at your inference. Same thing with your homework. Same thing with your homework. When you write your inference, don't just stop at your inference in my prediction. Also share why. Where did you get that information? What were your context clues? Okay? All right. Good job.